I'll show you how to test the PID controller with your temperature control lab. What we're going to do in this final step is come up with KC, Tau I, and Tau D. Those are going to be the PID tuning parameters. You can get those from the IMC correlations or the ITAE, for example. We're going to be testing this with this uh, feedback control system here, where this is our PID controller. And we're going to put in our KC, Tau I, and Tau D values there. And then we're going to run it on this uh, device with our actuator being our heater and our sensor being our temperature. And this is going to feed back into the PID control algorithm with our set point. Here's our set point that we're going to step up or down. And then we're going to observe how well the PV, the process variable, tracks the set point. So we're going to simulate the PID controller with and also with some of the models that we've determined from the prior parts from our parameter estimation model identification. And uh, when you're after you do this evaluation, you're also going to uh, quantifiably show how the PID controller meets certain performance criteria. You may want to use some of these like rise time, peak time, the period of oscillation, a decay ratio, an overshoot ratio. Uh, some of these are important when talking about closed loop control for underdamp systems. Okay, and we want to be able to tune the PID controller to maximize to minimize the sum of absolute error and achieve an overshoot ratio less than 10%. So you want to shoot for something less than 10%. And we'll use some code. I've given you some code here just to where you can plug in your PID controller. And also, uh, you know, if you want to plug in your models as well, you can plug them in there to compare. And what we'll do is compare the models. This is going to be the model comparison. And uh, here it just shows the temperature that I'm predicting versus the temperature that's measured. And then these are the metrics that you want to pay attention to. And so the, uh, the set point error is the red right there. That's how much you're deviating at every point from the set point. And it just adds those up. So you can see initially in the beginning there, I start at time uh, about 50 or I think 60 seconds into it, a minute into it, let it get to the, uh, the set point, okay, you can see it just doesn't uh, give you any air for that first little bit. It gets up to the set point and then makes its first step up. And then I'll make a step down and then a step back up again. So just let it run for this full 15 minutes. I think it's 15 minutes here. Um, just let it run for that and it'll test your PID controller and also how well your models are predicting. Now throughout this whole process, we've given the heater values to the device. In this case, the PID controller is actually specifying the heater values to try to drive you to your set point. Okay, so let me just show you the page for this on how to get there. Um, here is our course website. Again, come on down to the lab temperature control. And this one shows the three parts that we've worked on. Again, there's the starting point for the uh, control lab files. You can get those in Python, MATLAB, or Simulink. And, and then here are the different steps. And this final one is step number three, the closed loop control. Okay, and this will show the source code also down here at the bottom. And if you just download this one and run it, don't forget to get tclab.py. That is included with the initial download. So you're gonna need that in order to be able to run it because it's a package that we import to be able to communicate with our device. Okay, so let me just go ahead and show this. Um, you know, just my version of it. Okay, this is the one that you can download. I used a KC of 10, a Tau I of 50 seconds, and a Tau D of one. And uh, that translates into these KP, Tau I, and Tau D values. And then if we scroll down just a little bit, we'll see our models. Here's our FOPDT model right here, the first order plus dead time with a KP, Tau P, and Theta P and then also my energy balance. So here are some parameters like U um, is one of the unknowns and then alpha is also one of the unknowns. So plug those in after the parameter estimation and then it'll be able to track it. You can change the form of this equation if you'd like. 
So I have this uh, plugged in. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and run it. And then for the first minute, it'll just try to get to the new set point, and, uh, which is 25 degrees. And so you'll be able to see that uh, running here. Okay, it turned on the heater. Um, and it's going to heat up the device and get it up to the set point. It gives it about 60 seconds uh, just to get it there before the first uh, set point change. And so you can see it, um, you know, I have some energy balance air there as well. Um, and okay, so there, there it's going. It's not doing any cumulative air right now because it says, uh, let's give it one minute until we start uh, penalizing for deviations from the set point or from the measured values. Okay, so it's going to get up to about 25 where, you know, at one minute you'll see that switch happen. Okay, you can see the heater is, is going down. It kind of made its first set point change there. Uh, it's going to do just a little bit of overshoot, but basically just hug that, uh, that set point. And then uh, it's a little bit high right now, but not not too bad. Okay, so there's the first set point change. And you can see the cumulative air start to rise. So at every second, every time point, it's taking the absolute difference between the measured and modeled values and adding that to the cumulative energy balance air and the linear model air. And then it's also looking at the difference between the set point and the measured value and accumulating that as well. So I'm adding to my cumulative error right now about 15 every, uh, every cycle. And as you see, as it approaches the new set point, then that will start to decrease, okay? And it'll, it'll start to level out. So the better the controller performance, the better it tracks the set point, the lower the cumulative error that you should see. And, uh, you know, one other thing to mention is just go, you know, avoid doing things like, um, you know, touching the device or blowing on it during this test. Uh, it's going to be a lot uh, more quantifiable if you don't try to help out the controller, but you just, you know, let it go. Um, okay, so I'm going to let this run for a little, little while longer. Um, you know, I'll go ahead and just move this down to kind of the bottom and just kind of step through some of the code just to be able to help you a little bit more with this. Um, let me just go ahead and just show this this code. Um, you know what it's doing is it's going through and it's connecting to the Arduino. It turns on the LED, and then we're going to set the runtime to 15 minutes. You can adjust that, but just for the purposes of this test, I'd say leave everything uh, below this line kind of the same. Uh, we're going to get the number of cycles, so we want 60 seconds, uh, you know, per cycle, and then we have uh, the temperature. For the set point, I schedule a temperature set point of 50 from 60 seconds on, and then from 360 seconds on, I schedule it to be 30, and then from 660 seconds on, it's equal to 40. Um, and then I create basically my storage for my set points and my temperatures, just so I can be able to plot them later. Okay, and I just initialize a bunch of these values, set my, I'm not doing an impulse test right now, uh, so Q1 and Q2 are just equal to zero. I'm not really using the second heater, the temperature, second temperature sensor. We'll do that for later examples where we have multiple uh, controllers, multiple things that we're trying to control. And then we're printing out also on this line, printing time, set point, PV, and then Q. And then you can see the last three numbers there. They're coming in this window on the left. That is the proportional, the integral, and the derivative values. So the proportional is the first one. That's going to be Kc times my air, my set point minus PV. And then I have my integral term and then my derivative. So you can see the contribution from those three that equal the heater output or the controller output. Um, so that's useful to see as you're tuning the controller, trying to get better performance. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and create a plot. And uh, in this, and this is basically just the placeholder for the plot. And then we have our, our main loop. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to sleep for one second. It's going to look at how long the loop took and then sleep for the remainder of that one second, just so you don't go any faster than one second. Um, you know, you uh, if you're on a slower computer, sometimes that's going to be longer than one second. So you may not want to show the plot each cycle. Uh, or you're gonna your cycle time is going to be affected there. 
Okay, I'm going to record the temperatures. And that's actually in uh, Celsius, it's not in Kelvin. Um, and uh, then we'll simulate one time step with the energy balance, simulate one time, time step with the first order plus dead time model, and we'll calculate the PID output. That's the function that we declared above. And then we'll start from 60 seconds on to accumulate the error. So we just add in the prior error with the absolute value of the difference. And then we'll write the temperature output and then print the line of data, and there's our plot. So that's basically it. At the very end, it saves a text file with all of the relevant data that you might need, and also a figure that's called test PID. Okay, so here is our system. Let's just go back to the plot. I'm gonna go ahead and just maximize this. I'll bring it back up here. Okay, so you can see the, um, you know, it's following the set point fairly well. Uh, just slight overshoot there. You'd want to quantify that. It looks like only about a two degree, you know, rise over the, uh, you know, the, the set point there. So that's, that's pretty good. Um, it looks like it's less than the 10% overshoot. You want to get it to be less than 2.5 degrees Celsius overshoot over the uh, set point there. And then you can see that the models are lining up very well. A lot of those is kind of leveled off. So you see it where it is, uh, you know, the cumulative error is, is kind of leveled off there. And now the set point error is going back up because we had that set point going down. And so you can see this uh, trending down now. Okay, and then uh, with your device, you can go ahead and, um, you know, let it run the full 15 minutes and then include this figure in with your final report. Uh, that's going to be an important way to quantify your model performance, but also your PID controller performance. Okay, thanks for uh, watching and let me know if you have any questions.